Hello again, I'm back. Uh, we're going to be dividing rational expressions in this little lesson. And this one is actually coming by request. Uh, so I'm going to put this in the dividing rational sections, uh, uh, dividing rational expressions section. And we'll start with this one. I've got two different problems here. Uh, the first one's a little bit more difficult, but it's not really that bad. Second one is uh, a little bit easier as long as you rewrite it. So here we go. I've got x minus 1 divided by x, and that's all divided by 1 minus 1 over x. I believe that's the way it was sent. Uh, that's my interpretation of what I got from the message. Anyways, uh, I want to figure out how to simplify this. Uh, there's a few things to take into consideration here. Uh, let me just start with that. You want to find out what x values wouldn't work if you wanted to substitute it back in to make sure. x cannot be 0 here, because if you substitute in a 0, that means this, uh, excuse me, this denominator is 0, so that's not going to work. And x can't be 0 here because it means that the denominator can't be equals 0. So that's the first thing you should check. Okay, now we're getting on with the show of what we're supposed to do here. This is a little complicated, a little intimidating for students. So I tell them to do this. It makes it a little bit easier. 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. What I want to do is I want to get rid of this denominator right here. I can't have this denominator and this denominator because it makes my problem so difficult to take care of. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to multiply by the LCD, uh, LCM, least common multiple or least common denominator, of this fraction right here, this bottom one. So in order to do that, I'm going to say, well, what's my LCD? What's my LCM? Oh, it's very simple. It's just all your denominators multiplied together. X times 1 is X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole fraction here by X. But what I do on the bottom of a fraction, I should probably put it in green, actually. But what I do on the bottom of a fraction, I better do on the top of a fraction. Now there is one little point that I have to emphasize. Uh, it confuses students. Just make sure that it won't confuse you that much. And hopefully you'll be fine. Um, when I'm multiplying by x, it's not x over x. That's what a lot of students think. It's x over 1, x over 1. And see, somebody's going to say, well, why do I do that? Because what you do on the bottom of an expression, you have to do on the top of an expression. And it basically works itself out. So that's what we're going to do. Now, some people who are watching this can say, oh, I can simplify this now. Great, but let's just do it anyways. So I want to take care of the denominator first. 1 over 1 times x over 1 is just x. Minus, mm, let me use a little bit more room here. You know what, let's do the denominator first. So I'm going to take x minus 1 over x times x over 1. That is simply going to be this. x times x minus 1 over x times 1 is just x. I'm not going to distribute the x in. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So it's x times x minus 1 over x. x times 1 is just x. Now I'm going to divide it by 1 over 1 times x over 1 is just x. Subtracted by 1 over x times x over 1. The x is canceled. The 1's cancel. And well, the 1's don't technically cancel. You just left with 1. So that's what I have so far. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, in order to do this part of the problem, uh, let me rewrite it so it makes a little bit more sense here. x, x minus 1 over x, that's this part right here. I'm going to rewrite it so it makes more sense. Divided by x minus 1. And that's just over 1. Well, a division, when we're working with a problem like this, turns into a multiplication. Now, some people are going to ask me, well, why didn't I do that right away? Because this fraction got in the way. It doesn't make it easy when you do that. So I've got x, x minus 1 over x times, you're going to flip the division to a multiplication, and it's going to be 1 over x minus 1 in a quantity. This is my favorite part of the problem x minus 1 cancels, x minus 1 cancels, what's on the bottom and the top? That's cross-canceling. x and x, and my answer is 1. Now some people are going to say, well, I don't know if that's true. If you plug in any x value into either this problem, well, there's not really anything to plug in because it simplifies to 1. If you plug in any x value you want, except for 0, you can't do 0 because 0 is a constricted domain. You, it can't be equal to 0. Any x value you want, it will simplify to 1. And that's how you know if you did it right or not. So that's the answer to the first one. Looking at the second one, I've got 2 over x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. I would rewrite this. 
Uh, this one had this 1 over x, so I had to take care of it by multiplying by the LCD. That makes it complicated. I don't have to worry about that here. I'm just going to rewrite this so it's easier right away. 2 over x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. Since you don't see a denominator, assume that it's 1 because it is 1. Now let's uh, work our magic here. 2 over x minus 1. Division turns to a multiplication. Flip the fraction. 1 over x squared minus 4. Almost done. Uh, you want to end up factoring it if you can. So I have 2 over x minus 1. We'll put that in parentheses because it's actually a whole quantity. Times 1 over x squared minus 4 is the difference of two perfect squares. If you don't remember that, look at the factoring section. That's uh, factoring special products. That factors into x, x, uh, negative 4 is plus 2, subtract the 2. You can't do anything here. There's no 2 that cancels. Well, what about no? Because this is in parentheses with an x. This is just the 2 bytes up. There's no x minus 1 on the top. So the answer is 2 times 1, which is 2. And uh, it depends what your teacher would do. But I would not multiply these three uh, binomials together. I would leave it in factored form. That's how I would advise it, and the reason why I would advise that, very simply, is when you get to more complex mathematics, it shows you where a graph is undefined. It's undefined at 1, negative 2, and 2. And you couldn't be able to tell if you just multiply them all together. So, you know, that's the second example, which I think is easier. The first example is actually a lot more difficult. And whenever you're encountered with a 1 subtracted by a fraction, or there's a fraction, and there's a... In the denominator, there's a, another fraction that you got to worry about. Multiply by the LCM, least common multiple, or the LCD, least common denominator. And that will get rid of the fraction, which it did right there. And then you can work your magic. And then hopefully cancel everything out and have it be this beautiful. But most of the time, it's not. So that's dividing rational expressions, uh, part two requested. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. Have a great day.